Let's start with the ANC EFF deal. A year ago, on our numbers, the DA led the ANC in Gauteng by one point, 30 to 29. In March, the ANC led the DA again by five. And the reason is that the hope that around the DA could be built a constructive coalition was dashed in the minds of many people. And I've mentioned the, the data on township voters' expect, uh, experiences of the ANC and DA in government. There's, there's often a sense in, amongst you know, a lot of analysts who say a lot that obviously the ANC and the DA get together because they're largely the same, but it's not as simple as that. Last year, the ANC and the DA, the ANC and the EFF collectively did not have 50% in Gauteng. So if they got together nationally, the broader opposition could deny them Gauteng. Deny the ANC Gauteng now and put it in a pact with the EFF. You achieve two things. You mesh the brand of lying and incompetence and cheating and stealing with the brand of violence and anarchy. As a consequence, you stampede the last of the aspirant middle class out of the ANC camp and towards the, hopefully, the embrace of the opposition. Without that middle class, and with middle, with, with middle class see, increasingly seeing the ANC as irrelevant, it becomes a regional party headquartered in Limpopo, Northwest and Mpumalanga. And it will host its last policy conference in 20 years time like the, you know, whatever party. I was going to say the United Party, but it's not the same. Under a thorn tree on the Botswana border and it will be done. Now the better ANC thinkers know that this is a very likely chain of events that is set off by the deal with the EFF. They also know that those EFF chaps are good. They work hard, they're bright, they're determined, they're absolutely ruthless. And this is going to be a reverse takeover. Senior ANC leaders openly say reverse takeover. They're going to eat us alive. And I say they'll probably put you on trial for corruption as well, <laughs> by under, facing some sort of tribunal, you know, <laughs> in a stadium. Uh, the, 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 it's not far off, you know. And if, if, you're a, if you're the ANC and you've got to 45, 46, 47 percent, are you going to invite the most ruthless opponents you've ever had into the camp with you to say, please come and govern with us? And you compete for the same voter market. Or would you actually say, let's look at a smaller partner or a partner that competes in a different voter market, doesn't directly compete with us, to form some sort of coalition deal. So the, 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 the automatic, obviously it's ANC EFF, could very easily be, and the, there's some people around that are dumb enough to do that. If it happens, is it the end of the world? I don't think so. Because the ANC and the EFF in government, merging those two brands and surrendering the middle class, if they ever face another election, they're done. They're, together, they're going to be down to 30%. To avoid that, they've got five years to stop us from having another election, which they may try and do. But doing that is actually quite difficult. You can do it with reigns of terror and, and all manner of things. It's perfectly achievable. But they will be up against a battle-hardened civil society fresh off the victory of crushing Jacob Zuma's state capture run. And that could be a very well-resourced civil society and, and just simply not, not imagine this doesn't affect us, the result. It's much harder for the ANC and EFF to win that fight than for civil society to, to halt them enough. You don't have to beat them. Just hold, up, hold the line of being able to vote and most of the constitutional provisions for long enough that we get to another election. And on, on the side of, of, the op, of, of the opposition, I've told you what sharp ANC thinkers are thinking, the sharpest opposition thinkers think, bring it on. Let's demonstrate to voters, finally, those vacillating, doubting voters, give them a firm five-year demonstration of the consequences, and then it will be much easier to bring them across into a broad, a centrist, pragmatic opposition structured somehow by this 30%, 25% and these little fractures, it's fractious, if, if no nationalist parties that I say will come along. 
I haven't answered your question about how parties respond because I think I'm going to appear on YouTube with this and I don't want to discuss that on YouTube with them. But if you come and see me for a drink, I'll tell you. 